guys, welcome back. This is Motivation for Christians by SO. Welcome back, welcome back. Today, we're going to be diving into another Bible study. We're going to be going into the scripture of John chapter 11, verses 45 through 57. To begin, we're going to do a prayer by Brother Jack Van. To end off, we're going to do a prayer by me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another day that you have blessed us with. Thank you so much for your goodness. We pray, God, that as we journey through another study, that you will be with us, that you will be in the midst. We pray, God, that you will bring forth revelation. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts and our minds. Help us to hear from you. Help us to understand the text. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray that you will continue to just give us a desire for your word. And that iron will continue to sharpen iron. And that your will will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to dive into the scripture, um, verses 45. Many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen. But some went to the Pharisee and told them what Jesus had done. Then the leading priest and um, Pharisee called the high council together. What are we going to do? They asked each other. This man certainly performed many miraculous signs. If we allow him to go on like this, soon everybody will believe in him. Then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temples and our nation. I stop right there. Go from verses 45 to 48. What What is your understanding of those four verses? Um, so we know that anytime Jesus performs a miracle, um, that the news about it rapidly spreads, right? And so in, in Galilee, they were known, he was known as, he had the reputation as a healer, and one that can raise people from the dead. Uh, now he enters um, Judea. Now they're experiencing, coming to know him to be a miracle worker as well. Um, but they said something interesting, the Pharisees, um, if we allow him to continue like this, and the Roman army um, will come and destroy both our temples. That, that's, that was interesting to me. In my study Bible, it, it said, um, Rome gave partial freedom to Jews as long as they were quiet and obedient. And Jesus' miracles often caused a disturbance. The leaders feared that Rome's displeasure would bring additional hardship to their nation. They realized that they, they couldn't stop him, right? Couldn't stop them from performing miracles. And as a result of that, the Romans will lash out on them and their lives will become harder. So now they're more, even more incentivized to, to get rid of him or, or kill him. Um, and so you'll see that story um, kind of comes full circle as they begin to plot to kill Jesus. I you got all of that out of that, right? Yeah, I found that interesting, too, because I'm like, I thought y'all just wanted to kill him because y'all didn't like him. I know that the Roman Empire had something to do with that. Yeah, so that, it's part of it. Oh, well, yeah, part of it, part of it, part of it. Mm -hmm. Imagine all Jesus tried to do was just spread the word of God, perform the miracles. No, they trying to kill him. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, and let me read this part. So it says, even when confronted point blank with the power of Jesus' deity, some refused to believe. These eyewitnesses not only rejected Jesus, they plotted his murder. They were so hardened that they preferred to reject God's son rather than to admit that they were wrong. That's a tough one, right? They preferred closure instead of being open to God's marvelous power. We have to beware um, of pride, and that pride don't get in the way. Um, if we allow pride to grow, it can become an enormous sin, I'm not careful. Okay. So these Pharisees, they were prideful. They knew they were wrong and strong. Okay. No matter what happened, they're not going to believe. And this is exactly what's happening here. And by doing that, let's just get rid of him. They, they just sick into their motive. Ain't nothing from the same name, Verse 49. 
Cyphus, who was the high priest at the time, said, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't realize it's better for you that one man should die for the people than the whole nation to be destroyed. He did not say this on his own. As high priest at the time, he was led to prophesy that Jesus would die for the entire nation and not only for the nation, but to bring together and, uni and unify all the children of God scattered around the world. So it, even he knew, right? Yeah. Uh, the purpose of, of why Jesus came. Um, but he didn't say that off his own. So that, the Bible says he was led to prophesy that Jesus would die for an entire nation. So he, he wasn't, that didn't come straight from him, right? He, he was prophesying that. And all of that prophecy is the understanding that he not, Jesus did not come to save the Jews or to save the Romans. He, he came um, to save the entire world. Right? He did, and good thing, good thing he did. That now we can be forgiven for our sins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he came, his death was not just for Israel, um, but for all people, all over the world, right? For, for then and for now, and for, for those not even born yet, uh, he came and died for, died for me and you so that we can have, um, might have eternal life. Yeah. This is 53 says. So from that time on, the Jews' leader began to plot Jesus' death. As a result, Jesus stopped his public ministry among the people and left Jerusalem. He went to a place near the wilderness to the valley of Ephraim and stayed there with his disciples. It was now almost the time for the Jews' Passover celebration, and many people from all over the country arrived in Jerusalem seven days early so they could go through the public the purification ceremony before Passover began. They kept looking for Jesus, but as they stood around the temple, they said to each other, what do you think? He won't come to Passover? Will he? Mean meanwhile, the leading priests and Pharisees had publicly ordered that anyone seeing Jesus must report it immediately so they could arrest him. He just made sure Jesus disappeared. He was gone. He was out of sight. So now, now it gets real. Now you'll see um, how the story in, in John kind of takes a different turn. Right? And now they're trying to plot to kill him. So knowing that, that's why he, he left. But they knew that, that Jesus was obedient. Right? So because they knew he was obedient, they knew that he would come to the city to celebrate the Passover, right? um, but he decided to play it safe and go by the countryside. He was only, um, as my, my, my Bible puts it, he was only 12 miles north of Jerusalem. So he wasn't, he wasn't that far. He was close enough that he can still walk um, to the festival, to the Passover, right? But because they knew he was obedient to the law, they figured he'll come right back into the city where all the celebration is. And so they were using the city as a trap for him. This is their plot not to kill him, as the Bible says, arrest him, but their eventual goal is that they want to kill him. I um, think Jesus was going to go. That's what I meant to say. I don't, I don't know why I said went. Um, uh, I'm like a yes and no. I don't know. Um, I'll have to really dig in here and see. I mean, we're going to find out in the next chapter, but I just wanted to see where you had with that. I'm sure he went. That's what I'm saying. I feel like he would win. The same, I feel like he would win because cause God would have helped him to work in his favor. But I feel like in a situation like that, he might would just want to play a low and then show up at some other event. So I'm in the middle with it. He, he possibly, Jesus ain't scared of nobody. 
Okay. And what these fools don't understand is that he knows their plans before they plan it and before they carry it out. He ain't scared of nobody. He knows what's going on. He knows what he's doing. He, he'll go to make them think he'll, they'll trap him. He'll flip the script. Or disappear. Because remember, there was it was some other um, celebration that Jesus let his disciple go to. I don't remember which one it was, but it was in one of the, one of the early Johns that we read. Um, he let his disciples go, but he showed up secretly. And ain't nobody spot him out. Uh-huh. Hmm? I said, yeah. But yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he, yeah, okay. you know, he went. But, he may not have been in the thick of the crowd where everyone is. But, right, he would have been there. Yeah. So, we'll find out in the next episode of Bible study whether Jesus showed up to the celebration or not. I'm going to do my closing prayer and then my outro. God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I will rejoice and be God. I pray that each and every Sunday as I come together with my brothers to be able to fellowship in your word, God. I pray that we'll always be able to just come together, be able to discuss your word, God, to be able to learn more about you, God. Iron sharpen iron, God. We pray that no ego or anything of that sort will ever get in the way of what we're doing, God, and be able to just continue to come back to you each and every day, God. I pray that these videos will be able to be a blessing on the, the viewers, God. I pray that they'll be able to continue to learn through this video, God. I pray that they'll be able to get closer with you, God, each and every day, God. I pray that you, God, are protected in this upcoming week, God. In Jesus' name, your holy name, God, amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming back each and every single week. I love you guys for doing this. You guys are amazing. This is Motivation for Christians with Asman. I'm out.